want to go over irrigation and how not to do it now. This is a great example of something to avoid. We have a situation here where the contractor has put the riser for his sprinkler system right up against a wood fence. Now whether it's a wood fence or whether it's the side of somebody's house, we want to avoid anything to do with wood and water. We like to put our sprinklers at the front of a bed and spray towards the fence but come up short of any woodwork. So we would typically use drip irrigation along this fence line and try and spray the front of the bed with pop-up heads that pop up high enough to clear whatever plantings are in front. As you can see, the fence has started to stain. The system's only been in for six months or so, and um, it's already started to ruin this fence. Another thing you'll see is that the grade or the soil level is up against the wood fence. Typically for a wood fence, there's what's called a kicker, and that's the bottom piece of uh, wood that's there to, uh, it can, it's fine to have any soil against it because that one piece can be replaced without undermining the entire structure of the fence. Also, the reason that we don't like to have pop-ups or spray heads at the back of a border is that typically there are taller plants like this camellia at the back of the border. You can imagine that it, when this head is spraying, it's going to be blocked partially on this side of its pattern by this plant. So many times you'll see that there doesn't seem to be a coordination between the irrigation system and the planting scheme. That's why it's very important to have the irrigation designed in conjunction with the plant design so that you don't end up with this type of situation where a lot of your heads are being blocked by plant material.